All right, everybody. Welcome back to Inside the Pressure Cooker with Chef Morris and myself, Chad. And this week, we're going to be covering a topic that if you have not experienced it in your professional career yet, you will. Um, Morris, walk us through it. All right. Well, how much backstory should I go into this? <laughs> like nah. how, how I got to this position or just the position now? Now. All right. So I was working at a pop-up as a second job with a chef that I've been following on Instagram for a long time. Um, one that I really admired, really wanted to work for, actually applied at their restaurant multiple times and got shot down. But this pop-up actually hired me. And through the course of that pop-up, um, I was offered a position as a sous chef when the next restaurant opened. So I was working those two jobs. Um, both of them came to an end at the same time. So I took a job with a friend of mine as a butcher slash prep cook that was just supposed to be a stopgap while I waited for this other restaurant to open. And because it was supposed to be such a short stint, I was making like way less money than I was working the two jobs, but I figured it would be okay, you know, just a short while. And then the opening of said restaurant got pushed back and got pushed back and got pushed back. And now it's kind of like, is it even going to happen? Yeah. It's kind of on an indefinite hiatus. So I've got to make a move, right? I can't just be a, a prep cook. So an opportunity came up where a friend of mine is a chef at a, a catering company inside like corporate op offices, All right, which is a huge step away from where I thought my career was going to go. Like I was really aiming for high end restaurants and I thought that's where I belonged, you know? Right. You know, and that pop up as well. And the, the restaurants you were, um, you know, going to be involved with once that open, I mean, was going to be some of the, the best food in the Dallas area. Yeah, for sure. And that's, you know, that was my hope and my dream. That was everything that my career had been pointed to up until that direction. Like I, I felt like it was going to be a place that I really belonged at and I could really thrive at. And that was the whole point of me uh, venturing to Dallas in the first place was so that I could learn and get with better chefs, you know. But anyway, so uh, this friend of mine has been hounding me for a while to come on. And I always pushed it off because it was like, that's not what I want to do. Right. But now, because the other restaurant is on you know, indefinite. And because I've gotten myself into kind of a financial hole by waiting so long, I need a place where I can go. That's, you know, financially stable has insurance and all that, but they've also got, you know, the, the schedule that works with having kids, you know, mm -hmm. it's a Monday through Friday morning thing. But the dilemma came as you know, I could stick it out and and wait for this other restaurant to open or try to find another chef job in Dallas. But that comes with, you know, working nights and weekends, holidays, all the stuff that comes with being a chef. And I've done it all before, but I think I'm at a place in my life where I need something more stable so that I'm home for my kids, you know? If I was a single guy, this wouldn't be a thing. You no, know? no, not at all. And yeah, I could just find you know multiple jobs and and restaurants in Dallas and just yeah, keep just the ball it out. Yeah, but having kids and a house and a wife, you know, you have to think about the more stability side of it mm -hmm. rather than the passion, and that's. Yeah. Well, and your wife I, is in the industry too, and she's a GM at a restaurant. 
Um, yes. And so she's got her own schedule that you guys got to deal with um, and juggle on top right. of family. Yeah. And so for both of us to be away, you know, multiple nights during the weeks and the kids are just home by themselves, like it's not, it's not what we wanted, you know, and we didn't, you know, we grew up in this industry, like we didn't know anything else. So right. that's where it came to like, uh, do I want to stick this out or do I want to find something else so that I can maintain my dream of being like a really good chef, like a, like getting my name out there or do I do what's right for my family? And Which, ultimately I have to do what's right for my family. Yes. Because the question, you know, in a nutshell is, do you follow the passion and the selfish nature of, of chefs of, because in, in, it's almost like the culinary identity that we talked about right. where, you know, you almost need something like that to justify the work that you've already put in and the time that you've already missed with your family. Yeah. And, and it almost becomes like a vicious circle um, or cycle, I should say, where you need to constantly be justifying why you're doing things. And, and I've caught myself in that. Um, and you end up working harder to continue to prove yourself, not just to yourself and what you think is to your family, um, but to the culinary community uh, to stay relevant. And then next thing you know, your family's just like, hey, you remember us? Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, it, and so... I've, I've been facing that situation. Um, there's been multiple times in my career where I've just been, whether it was one kid or two kids, um, uh, where I've kind of come to that crossroads and, you know, my wife and I discussed it as well. Um, and my wife's not in the industry. And so it's like, man, what do we do? Like, do I chase, you know, those real chef jobs? Or do I get into that corporate environment, whether it's hospitals, or, you know, um, institutional, so to speak. Right. Um, and we never ended up going down that road, um, but it's always been, it's always been there. Right. And like the thing about this job is, one, it's more money than I would make as a line cook anywhere else. Sure. Right? And, uh, you know, the benefits and the insurance that all come with working with a corporation. And so they're, they're real benefits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Real insurance. It's, it's, um, I forgot where I was going to go with that, but it's the safe play. And after making so many sacrifices for so many years, like I owe it to my family to do that. And this, the, my friend that's, that's the chef there. He's only worked there for like a year. He's been promoted twice. So like the promotability and the ability to make more money is, you know, is greater there than it would take, you know, a couple of years of working as a sous chef before you bounce up to exec or, or chef de cuisine or something like that. Sure. <laughs> No, and I mean, the important part for everybody to understand with this is when you talk about promotability and like getting more money is you're not necessarily chasing the money um, as much as you're chasing the lifestyle that this position will allow you to live. And, right. and that's about being at home, not necessarily having to worry about money as much, you know, mm -hmm. being able to get yourself out of that debt. And then at one point, just being a, a lot more comfortable in life. Yeah. So it's, it's not about chasing money. It's at a certain point in your life, um, whatever age you're at right now, there's going to be a point where you ask yourself, like, is this all worth it? Um, yeah. You know, like one of the reasons I retired from the industry um, and took a job 
paying zero, right? Um, mm-hmm. Which is a significant pay cut. Um, was to focus on the lifestyle that my that I wanted to live in my for my family, right? So it, it's not about money; it's about making lifestyle decisions, and it's about playing the long game. You know, mm-hmm. like if I can follow in this guy's footsteps and get promoted, you know, in six months or a year and basically double my income, you know, that's an amount of money I've never even, you know, fathomed of making, you know, what can I do with that money that would put me, make those dreams come true, you know? Sure. I could actually save money for, for opening a restaurant of my own, or I could do, have the free time to do pop-ups or, or dinners or, something like that to, to get my name out there. So it's, it was a blow to the ego to even consider taking this, considering where I wanted to go. But at the same time, it could afford me an avenue to get there. It's just not the, you know, the typical journey of a chef. Well, what is typical though? Oh, you know how it goes, man. It's like, it's who you know and and who you worked for. That's what matters in this community. Uh, There's some truth to that, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's like, this isn't New York or Chicago or San Francisco. Right. You know, there's not that many big name chefs in Dallas, honestly. No, you're right. Mm -hmm. Um, no, but I like that idea of, you know, you're, you've made that decision to kind of go after that, that lifestyle. Um, but you're also not prepared and and you're not giving up your identity. That's what it felt like. It really felt like that at first, but I've kind of come to terms with what I would be able to do instead of giving up. Oh, sure. And I mean, it probably was an immense amount of failure, right? Yeah, it fucking sucked. <laughs> yeah, because it's you put all those eggs in that one basket and then all of a sudden you're just like, well, oh, fuck. Yeah, um, I gambled and I lost and now I got to fix it. But that doesn't mean the dream has to die. No, I mean, on luckily, quite honestly, like you're in a fortunate spot that you already have that other position that's potentially available for you. Right. Um, you know, so others in this situation, uh, like when I was in this situation, uh, I, I didn't have that other, like, is it a or B I had to go figure out what B was going to be. Right. Um, you know, who knows if, if I had B there available for me, who knows where I'd be at now? Yeah. Um, Yeah. <clears throat> so even though it was, it's been like a, a shitty situation, like mentally to kind of make that, that shift, you know what I mean? From, you know, really high end cooking to extremely not high end cooking. Yeah. I have been very fortunate that I have a lot of friends in the industry that do want to work with me and do want to give me opportunities so it's never like been a situation where I just don't have a job, which is the absolute worst thing. Yeah. 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 Is at that point, then you're definitely kind of the, not on, not on top of the failure, but you also had a level of panic. Yeah. And I've kind of gone through that situation before where I like I had multiple stages and multiple interviews, but there was just like no place for me to go and and be able to to grow. And I had to take a a job or two out of sheer panic just so I had a steady paycheck. And that's a shitty situation. That's a much worse situation to be in. True. Very true. So at least it's not that. Yeah, I mean, because at that point, just getting that paycheck, I mean, you're definitely giving up a lot more of your identity, and that's a lot more of a failure. 
Yeah. Because then you spend that whole time every time you go to that job just thinking like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, exactly. So you're in that spot. You've, mm-hmm. you've decided that, you know, obviously you've gone through those interviews um, and you're just kind of waiting to hear back on that one at this point. Um, mm-hmm. But there's a, a pretty strong chance you, you've you've landed that one. Um, you've gone through the, the emotional cycle of mm-hmm. failure, depression. What the fuck am I doing? Um, no, this is the right thing for my family. I'm doing the right thing. And then that leads back into the I've failed my self. Right. Uh, I've put Mm -hmm. my family through a bunch of stuff unnecessarily. Um, And I'm just I'm not putting words in your mouth. I'm just kind of going through like I know these are emotions (laughs) that I know I've felt. Right. Yeah. Um, You definitely hit the nail on the head. And. um, And and then there's like another level of depression um, of, you know, what the fuck did I do? What am I doing? Why am I doing this? Um, What what is worth it? Yeah. Um, you know, and then you're like, but I've invested so much in this and myself, like giving this up, like, was this, have I just been wasting the last four, five, six, ten 10 years of my life? Yeah. Oh, some bitch. Hold on. Man, sorry. The dog made its way into the room and just started scratching at the carpet. <laughs> um, and and then then you're like, okay, I'm doing this. I, I, I'm doing this for the family. And you've kind of reached that level of you're you're almost justifying it to yourself, right? But you don't yeah. really believe it at first. Yeah. Um, you're you're having to justify that to yourself, and finally you realize that everything you'd been saying to yourself is all true but it doesn't mean that you've died. Right. Right. I know we've just kind of covered all this. I'm just summing this up in a lot of ways. Um, But let's, let's talk about this more about where you haven't died. And so where other people kind of face in this situation, they're like, but I've got nothing left. And as a chef, um, you, you still have that passion you have to feed. Mm hmm. And otherwise there is a part of your soul that will die. So you've decided that this is also going to give you the opportunity to do pop-ups. And there's other people you've talked to that are, that are wanting to do some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, let's talk about that. These other opportunities that you can do that are available to you that, that you've come to realization that, Hey, you know what? This is still a viable option. And it's just, it allows me to have fun. It allows me to cook and create and, and make some extra money on the side. Right. Well, even, and it was really like a short time before this, like a couple of weeks before this happened, I have a, a guy that used to work for me as a cook, but he went to school for engineering. So he's got himself a really nice engineering job, but he still has a huge passion for cooking. And he just randomly started sending me um, pictures of spaces. And I was like, I kind of blew it off at first. I was like, man, like I am not in a position like personally or financially to even consider opening a restaurant right now. Like there's no fucking way. But that did get the wheels turning for more of a plan, an end game. You know, where could this go instead of just saying, well, I guess I'm done in the industry now. I'm just going to do you know, the safe thing. It doesn't have to be that way. And if he hadn't sent, started sending me those text messages, it probably would have been an even more of a, a, an identity crisis. You know? But what that did was planted a seed of what can I do even if I feel like I'm taking a step back to leap forward Mm -hmm. and there are you know there's other people involved but 
I think that's much more of a game plan than what I even had originally. You know, the, the end game before was I want to work at this restaurant. I didn't know if I was going to move up in that restaurant or get, or if they're going to open another one after that and I can be a part of that. That's all part of the plan, but you know, who knows? But now I can have a little bit more sense of control of what I'm actually doing and what I want to do. And you can see more of the long game now. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it's interesting. And, and I'm trying to remember um, when we talked about pop-ups. I don't know if it was one of the episodes um, or if it was just us in conversation. Um, but there was a point when pop-ups were kind of a trendy thing. And I don't remember what that was, maybe 15 years ago or, or maybe a little bit less. Um, and, and just they were the thing. People were doing them. And um, and then they kind of died. Um Maybe just because they're not trendy anymore. But I, I also see just in the state of the union of restaurants uh, as restaurant, smaller individual restaurants struggle more and more with keeping up um, mm -hmm. with, with just the bigger chains that are able to um, afford taking the hit financially uh, due to inflation, increased prices. You know, they've got the buying power for all that stuff. They've got the stain power um, that that volume has and the smaller mom and pop places and chef owned places are really, really going to keep struggling. And as an individual, like, hey, you know what? I'd love to open my own restaurant. Ran right now is uh, is probably a horrible time to try to do that as an individual. <laughs> yeah. Um and you know, it's just unless you've got the right location with very limited um, what I was going to say, very limited competition where you can just go in and just own the entire neighborhood, right. um, which there's not a lot of those out there. There are, um, but you've got to be definitely in an emerging market. Um, yeah. And. But as a chef in more of a, in a Dallas area where it's not really an emerging market, it's already there. Like, what are you going to do? Like, how are you going to compete with some of these places? Um, and so I, I think the idea of a pop-up is perfect. And I, I think we're going to, in the, in the near future, probably start seeing pop-ups happen a lot more frequently. Right. And we are in an area, um, smaller area, like north of Dallas. Most of us live north of Dallas. It's a, mm -hmm. and it's a food scene that's you know it's not overrun with with restaurants like Dallas is, and there's it's a super supportive community. So like new restaurants that open, like people are interested. People go out of their way to eat there, even if you know. Even if your staff is a skeleton crew, and even if you can't be uh, open every day, just do, uh, due to costs, you know, people are really supportive around here. And I don't think that community aspect is going to change. So, I'm not talking about opening a restaurant next year. You know, this is more like a, I don't know, a five year plan, if you will. Sure. But that was one of the things that I mentioned to the guy. I mean, he was like you know, I'm making good money now. I'm going to eventually get to a spot where I want to invest in a restaurant. And the fact that he reached out to me personally was you know, very flattering. But, you know, in five years, what's the market going to be like? You don't really know. I know like the economy is kind of in a, a downward spiral right now. And, you know, rents are super high around here right now too. Right. So now is just a time for me to a money up to support my family and B really dive deep into an aspect of uh, restaurants that I didn't really, I can operate in a restaurant from like a executive chef standpoint, but how do I think about it from 
a complete operational standpoint. You know, so I've been getting more books, of, you know, mm-hmm. restaurant ownership and startup and LLCs and, and loans and like stuff that I never would have really thought of before. All the shitty parts of being a chef and owner of a restaurant. Right. But, but you have to know yeah. it. Yeah. And now I have a time and an opportunity to learn that stuff on my own. Yeah. And not the hard way. Yeah. Because the hard way usually uh, does not end well. Yeah. I mean, we've all seen it happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where my head's at now, man, is like this felt like a really awful blow to everything the past 10 years of my life has been gearing toward. But it's more of a, it's not the end of the road. It's a fork in the road. Sure. You know what I mean? I have to veer off a little bit, but I think it's gotten me a a good new headspace now. Sure. And it just goes to show that, I mean, sometimes the smart move isn't always the easiest one to, to make. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I say it's the smart move because once again, uh, I mean, I've got a family, I'm older, I've been there and I understand. Um, and someone listening to this that doesn't have a wife or kids in their <laughs> early twenties or something, man, you're in a very different spot. So, uh, yeah. but it's only a matter of time before you do hit this spot. Mm-hmm. I don't cool, think, man. Really- well, I said like it's not a typical journey for a chef, but you know, looking back, I haven't had a typical journey of a chef in the first place. So, I mean, this isn't that much of a uh, that much of a veer off for me, you know? No, not at all. I mean, there's there's so much more to the food world than than what people think there is. So. Um, it's all, it's not all high end fine dining and, uh, you know, so it's, it's just, it's more about coming into reality with your dreams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing, man. Yeah, for sure. I hope it can give some advice to somebody that's listening. Whether now or in the future. Yeah. Thanks for listening to this episode with Morris and I. Uh, Morris definitely gets into sharing a lot of personal details about where he's at in life. Uh, and I know so many of us have been there. Uh, I, I've crossed that bridge probably a few times myself. So if you haven't been there, yeah, consider yourself somewhat fortunate. Uh, but don't be surprised when you do get to that spot. Um, so many people um, and chefs and cooks get faced with that real life scenario of just like, man, what, what am I following? Is it time to keep following my dreams or do I need to really start focusing on myself, my family, um, and start making some different decisions. So thank you again, Morris, for sharing. Appreciate you. Um, and good luck on your new gig, man. And for everybody else, quick announcement. Well, for everybody in general, right? Quick announcement. Ready? And this wraps up season two. Yes, that's right. Season two. We are going to be taking a little bit of a break. Um, I know this episode in general is a week behind, uh, but I've got a couple consulting gigs that are starting to take up more time. And so obviously you need to focus on those since those pay me and this doesn't. Um, not that I don't love doing this, uh, but we just need to take a little bit of a break. All right. And, uh, once we come back, maybe with Morris again, maybe with another host, maybe just back to, uh, individual episodes. Uh, we'll see. We've got a little bit of time to organize it. If you will, uh, if you've got any thoughts or ideas, just go ahead and email me. There's a link in the show notes. Thank you all for listening so, so much. Uh, It's been a fun ride so far and look forward to seeing everybody once we get back. Thank you.